Hey everybody, quick homework calc video here for section 21-2, pages 20, 221 and 222. Um, I want to do a quick um, recap of a couple of vocab terms, especially since in this numbers, a lot of this lesson is talking about um, some different types of angle pairs, specifically ones that were in the lesson today. Um, so I'm going to give you... So here's some of the terms. I know some of these were in the video, some of them were not, um, but they're pretty much all things that are going to be talked about in this lesson. So one of them is corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are those angles that are on the same spot or location, just at two different intersections. So an example of that would be if you look at this intersection right here, um, I've got angle one, so top intersection of my example down here. If you look at the other intersection, so that's the bottom one, what's in, which one is in the same spot? That would be angle 5. So an example of that would be angles 1 and angle 5. There's more than just that example, though. Like 2 would be corresponding to 6. Um, 3 would be corresponding to 7. Okay, They're just in the same location, just on two different intersections. All right, those things are always going to be congruent as long as the lines are parallel. That's one of the things that was in this video. They're going to be the same length, and they look like the same. Um, alternate interior angles. So you got to break it down, alternate and interior. So there are two angles on the interior of two lines. So here's our two lines right here on the interior, but they're on opposite sides of the transversal. And the transversal is what cuts through those two lines. So like angle 3 is on the inside of it, and so it's either going to be 4, 5, or 6, because those are also on the inside of these two lines, but on the opposite side of the transversal would be 6. So 3 and angle 6. There's actually only one other possibility. Five, 4 and 5 are also alternate interior angles. Those are also congruent. So let's put the little congruent symbol by the ones that would be congruent. Alternate exterior angles. If I look at alternate exterior angles, I'm going to leave my two lines drawn there because I have two lines and a transversal. Alternate exterior angles would be on opposite sides of, so on the, in, on the exterior of the two lines, but on alternate sides, meaning if I take like angle two, it's on the opposite of my, on the outside of my two lines that are parallel here. The one that's alternate and on the outside would be 7, so like completely opposites. The only other examples would be 1 and 8 in this diagram. All right, those also, as you can see in the picture, and we've talked about a little bit, but um, those are also congruent. Um, same side interior and linear pairs, those are the ones that are a little bit different when we have parallel lines. Same side interior um, are on the same side of the transversal, and they're also on the interior, so like 3 and 5. Those are not congruent, as hopefully you can tell. 3 is a lot smaller than 5. Those actually are supplementary, and those are add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to say supplementary here. There's my little abbreviation. And then finally, the last one we're going to quick do an overview of is what a linear pair is. A linear pair is something that... Um, if you, I'm going to pick a different color here, let's just use, maybe we'll use this orangish one. If you look at a linear pair, so these are going to be something that are supplementary, I'll show you why. Linear pair is two angles right next to each other that together make a line. So if I take any line, let's just say I take this line, two angles right next to each other that make that line would be angles one and two, because together they would make a whole straight line. And since a whole straight line adds up to 180 degrees, they are supplementary. There's lots of examples here. Like 1 and 3 are also considered a linear pair. 2 and 4, um, 5 and 6, and so on. So in today's homework, it says look at the example below uh, to the right and answer questions using the words corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and linear pair. So those are three of the vocab words we just talked about. So... Um, it says, all right, angle 1 and 9 are corresponding angles. So if we talked about corresponding, they're in the same spot, just in different intersections. So those would be. And they're congruent as well um, because the lines are parallel. And then we have a transversal there. Um, 
4 and 5 are examples of alternate interior angles. So let's, I'll use green here. Alternate interior angles, 4 and 5, because they're on opposite sides of that transversal, but on the interior of the parallel lines. Those are going to be congruent as well. And then finally, um, an example of linear pair would be 1 and 3. So 1 and 3, because they're right next to each other, and together they make a line, so they add up to 180 degrees. So if we're using that same diagram to answer questions 1 and 2, uh, number 1 says use the diagram in the example, name a different pair of corresponding, a different pair of alternate interior, and a different pair of uh, a linear pair. Okay, so we can do that. Um, remember, corresponding angles would be in the same spot of two different intersections. So let's just pick a random one. Um, my favorite number in here, I always go with 3. It's always 3. So find a corresponding angle to angle 3. It's got to be in the same spot, so in this case, upper right, of a different intersection. So I could say angle 7. You could also say angle 9. Or uh, not angle 9, sorry. Angle 11 would also be in the same spot in a different intersection. So there's another example that would go with those. Um, alternate interior. Let's look at alternate interior. Alternate interior, if we said alternate interior are on the inside of two parallel lines, or two lines, so let's just take these two lines. On the inside of those two, but on alternate sides of the transversal, we could say 8 and 9. And by the way, those would be congruent as well. They're on the inside, but they're on opposite sides of this transverse that cuts through it. Okay, and then a linear pair. There's lots of linear pairs. Just find a line. Find a line right here. Um, I could say 9 and 11, or I could say 10 and 12. Either way, those are supplementary. They would add up to 180 degrees, and they make that line together. Okay, now going down to number two, use the diagram in the example. If the measure of angle 7 is 108 degrees, what is the measure of angle 12? Explain how you found that measure. So the beauty of an example like this is if you have one measure, you can find a lot of angle measures just with the knowledge of the, the vocab that we just talked about. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put it in here, measuring of 7 is 108, and we want to find the measure of angle 12. So if this measure right there is 108 degrees, Okay. Based off of that, we can find a lot of information. We're ultimately trying to find the measure of angle 12 right here. So right now they're not even in the same intersection. So let's maybe try to find something in this intersection that has, that's with 12 that would be based off of angle 7. So if I look at angle 7 and angle 11, those two are congruent because they're corresponding angles. They're in the same spot in just a different intersection, and these lines are parallel. So this is also 108 degrees. Okay. Now, if that is 108 degrees, um, no, there's actually one angle that I didn't um, make note of. One type of angles was vertical angles. We know angle 10 should also be 108 degrees. They're called vertical angles. They're opposite of each other. So there's another thing right there. But you can find the measure of angle 12 from that. If you look at uh, 11 and 12, those two together make a line. They form a line. They are linear pair. So they add up to 180 degrees. So that means that if you take 180, subtract 108, you'll get what's left over. So I'm going to borrow here, and I get 2, 7, so 72. So that means the measure of angle 12 is 72 degrees. But don't forget to explain what we just did, okay, in your own words. All right, let's go to number five. Uh, sorry, not number five, number three, page two. Use the diagram to show, uh, to, uh, shown to the right to solve problems three through five. All right, so let's look at this diagram right here. Now, you'll notice about in, di in this diagram that there's only two parallel lines, A and B. So these two that I'm highlighting in green are parallel. The other ones are not, so then... There's only certain things that we can know are congruent based on those two parallel lines. So let's look at this. It says, with measure of angle 3 is 65 degrees. So we'll label that. Measure of angle 11 is 100 degrees. We'll, we'll, measure the, uh, we'll label that. 
Um, find the measures of angle 2, 5, and 13, and tell which relationships you use to help find them. So if I look at 2 right away, 2 is right next to 3. And guess what? They form a line. So a linear pair. So I would take, that means they add up to 180 degrees. So we know that's a linear pair. A uh, pair with angle 3. So um, to find angle 2, I can do 180 minus 65. Borrow again. 5, 1, 1. So 115 degrees. I'm going to actually put this in my diagram. Because the more you label, the more you know, the more you know, the more you can find. Let's go to angle 5. Um, angle 5 is not in the same intersection as 2 and 3. It's not in the same intersection as 11 either. But it is formed by these parallel lines here. So it kind of goes along with 11. So the measuring of 5 and the measuring 11 are actually congruent to each other. Those are called alternate, because they're on opposite sides of the transversal, alternate exterior angles. So they're on alternate sides and they're on the opposite. They're like completely opposite in the two intersections between parallel lines. And as you, if you recall, alternate exterior angles are congruent as well. So that means that that measure of angle 5 is also 100 degrees. And I'm going to put that label on here. And finally, we want to find the measure of angle 13. So 13, I'm going to use one of the either angles 2 or 3 to help me find 13 because those two are connected by the parallel lines in a transversal. Whereas like 11 and 13, even though they look like they're alternate exterior, these aren't parallel lines that, that uh, are between them. So we're going to look at 13, and I can tell from 13 it is an alternate interior angle with angle 3. That would be alternate interior angle. And I know alternate interior angles, if I look back, are going to also be congruent to each other. So since those are congruent to each other, 3 and 13, they're both 65 degrees. So that equals 65 degrees as well. All right. Pretty easy as long as you can tell what type of angles they are. They actually look congruent as well. Sometimes they don't even look congruent, so you can tell that they're not. Let's go to number four real quick here. All right, number four says the find the measures of angles 3, 8, 9, 14 to show that the sum of the interior angles of a trapezoid is 360. Tell which angles you use, angle relationships you use. So I'm not going to write that all down, but you can show that, um, and you can write that in your own. But 3, 8, 9, and 14, those are all the ones on the inside. We already got 3 is 65 degrees. Um, 9 we could find really easily because 9 and 11 are, all, are vertical angles. So they're opposite of each other on that same intersection, and they are equal. So that's 100 degrees. So that's vertical angles. Um, 8 and 14 we need to find yet. So 8 and 5, if you look at 8 and 5, those together form this line, this linear pair. So if you take 180 and subtract that 100, you should get the measure of angle 8. But that would leave us with 80. So I'm going to write that in there. Measure angle 8 is 80 degrees. Um, we can actually use the same relationship, a linear pair as well here, because we have a line. Whoa, that was kind of funky. But we got a line. 13 and 14 make up that line, so they add up to 180 degrees. So I would do 180 minus 65, which I actually did already. That's right here. So it's 115 degrees. Now, I could have also looked at that being corresponding to angle 2. They're in the same spot here in different intersections between parallel lines, so those would be congruent as well. So 15, 100, 80, and 65 as my four angles. 
and hopefully they add all that up to 360 degrees because that's what's inside of a quadrilateral like that. So it's 10, carry the 1, 2, 16, carry the 1, 3, 360 degrees. Okay. All right, finally, number 5. Are 3 and 5, and it was 3 and 5 congruent. Explain. I, I looked at this one earlier, and there's a good reason why someone might say that 3 and 5 are congruent. I'm going to erase this all this because we actually don't need that information right now. 3 and 5, if you looked at the two angles, they're on alternate sides of this line, and they're on the interior of these two lines. So normally we'd say, yeah, those are alternate interior angles. But if you look at them, they don't even look the same. And the reason they're not the same is because these two lines are not parallel. Only angles or lines A and B are parallel. So that means that if they're not parallel, then the alternate interior angles aren't congruent. Okay? So no, and that's again because C and D are not parallel. All right? So, working with a lot of those different angle pairs here in section 21, uh, lesson 21, um, day 2. Hope that helped uh, with the, the homework.